Uh, you notice some of these songs were a little more aggressive than we usually have. I mean, these are a younger generation in some regards, but otherwise they're not because they're still a message. Today we're going to be on um, boldness a little more. And these songs are bolder songs. And they do have a big effect because they're helping the younger generations. And anything that can bring the younger generation up stronger to help continue our younger generations to be better and stronger and follow the Lord is worth sharing and learning and being strong and bold enough to share it for all generations. Amen. And this church is determined to reach all generations. <laughs> and uh, we've also got, we're still working on some of the uh, giving procedures. Uh, there's still, you can text it, you can go on the website. We're working on the app. We've had a couple struggles with that. So you can put an app on your phone, which would work. It's basically a different form of website because it's not always easy to get the website on a phone opposed to a computer, the way they're designed. So what an app is basically that in chain, in turn. <coughs> um, we, I have set back till I think it's May 3rd for us to go to donate for the homeless. We've got some supplies already built up. You have until next Sunday to bring it in and then following Saturday. And if you bring me something in between there, that's fine as well. We're going to set it up and then we're going to go out to the bridge area, to the homeless. We're not going to approach them personally. We're going to lay stuff out for them to come and take what they want. You know, because some of them are slightly unstable and they don't go to shelters so that's why we're going to them with this anybody who wants to come with to help donate this stuff let us know if you're going to want to call by phone it's on the website 701-412-3972 email me uh, church of god's word at outlook.com and if you have any questions feel free you can always connect in some other area too if you like. Is it April 3rd? Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm not skipping a whole month. Yes, April. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> April 3rd. It is a Saturday. So uh, I don't have a time designed yet and I'm still going to reach out to the Fargo Police Department to go set up so that we can have an officer come with us to make sure things are safe for all of us, including them. Uh, this week, that picture up. We had talked recently or in the past about adopting a child through Compassion International. This young man, his birthday was on Thursday, he turned nine years old. Oh, this was a really hard thing to do. I was crying trying to pick a child. There was over 150,000 children just on that website. And they ranged from little to uh, 20. Oh yeah, I was a, I was a mess doing this. And, but on his birthday of nine years old, he is now sponsored by our church. Uh, I have his name here. <laughs> and this <clears throat> is going to be probably really mispronounced. Revocatus. That's R E V O C A T U S. We also have a link to him on our website. And. Uh, there's information if you want to send them a letter, a card. We have to go through channels for that. I haven't looked at all that, but he is officially uh, sponsored through our church. And as you know, we are uh, also partners with uh, Churches United in Moorhead. As I've said, this church is determined to grow. And every time we get one thing done, it's put on us to look for another thing and another thing and do another thing and we're going to do all these things that we are able to and just in case anybody ever questions at this time we are obviously a smaller congregation all of us are volunteers none of us are being paid anything the church is not paying out anything except for the needed expenses and like the child and the partnerships with other areas so Everything that we are collecting is being used for future endeavors. I am also waiting to hear back from a business here in town that we might be able to rent space 
to have in the church or to have our church in. So prayers to that. We haven't heard back yet, but we're always looking for things. If you find something that is a possibility, let us know because we are giving. We're going to continue to give as long as we can. And of course, we all know that when you give, you grow. So oh, thank you for all the opportunities that you have given us, Lord. Thank you for all the gifts that you supply for this church and for everyone that we are able to forward on to, to help with, as our young, new young gentleman that is in our midst of taking care of. Thank you, Father. And if you don't, if you're not in a strong emotional moment, do not go looking for a child to sponsor. <laughs> it's it's going to just tear you up. And the two of us are sitting there, I just grabbed a box of Kleenex and set it on the table because it, it, it is so hard not even looking at any of the detailed information of the world that they're living in. Oh, yeah, that's right, I'm sorry. He is in Tanzania, Africa. Um, his language correspondence is Swahili. Right now his uh, U.S grade of um, equivalent is third grade. He's average. He likes uh, ball games, dolls, group games, jumping, dancing or drama, learning about God. Uh, he had both parents, but his father has passed away, but he is able to be living with his mother yet. Um, she's the female guardian who is also employed as an agricultural farmer. Um, it's quite often where these children don't have either of their parents. So he does at least have that available for him still. But he's he was anxiously waiting for a sponsor, so he needs support to have opportunities to learn, grow physically, mentally, and spiritually. And, well, congratulations, you guys. We're doing it. <laughs> it's not me. It's not just one. It is us. Because we are able to do this. And who knows, maybe we'll be, let me rephrase that, not maybe. In the future, we're going to be taking care of a whole village. So, this church is moving. <laughs> okay, I get it. There I go again. <laughs> Thank you, Father. And that brings us to Numbers 18, 25 through 29. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the Levites and say to them, when you receive from the Israelites the tithe I gave you as your inheritance, you must present a tenth of the tithe as the Lord's offering. <coughs> your offering will be reckoned to you as grain from the threshing floor or juice from the wine press. In this way, you also will present an offering to the Lord from all the tithes you receive from the Israelites. From these tithes, you must give the Lord's portion to Aaron the priest. You must present the, as the Lord's portion the best part, or the best and holiest part of everything given to you. Now, in the Old Testament, which is in Numbers, it wasn't an option. You were told you had to do this. They still had free will, of course, and those who didn't do it suffered a lot more than people do today that are at least having the opportunity to be saved by Jesus as their Savior. But he's telling us, it's the same process. He's telling us what he wants us to do, how to take care of each other. I mean, this inheritance is something given to you just because it's you. Not because that's what you earned. There's too many people looking for inheritances because they don't want to have to earn it. But he's saying, I gave you this, so you must give this. Well, today it's your free will and God is still asking us to do that. He gives it to us for us to in turn to give us to back, you know, give back. Today we earn it, but you know, here they have, the others had to do the earning of it though. You know, they had, the Israelites, they had to go earn it, put it all together, grow it, make the wine, make the grain, and then the rest was given. Well, they were also supposed to be given too. So everybody has to do their part. And all asked, he's ever asked is 10%. It's sometimes the labor, it's sometimes the product, it's sometimes the money. However it is, it is the Lord's gift that he gave us initially. 
So, Father, again, we thank you for the gifts that you provide for this church and for all those that have the opportunity to give online for us as well so we can help with anything and everything that is asked of this church. In Jesus' name, amen. So, like I was saying, the songs that we were talking about or, or that we were singing earlier, they're a more bold song in many ways. And sometimes you got to show a little more boldness for people to see it, to be able to do it. You know, with boldness, it's courage, bravery, fearlessness, confidence, and confident trust. Now, one of the biggest places to have your confident trust in is in the Lord. That's, that, that, that's so important. Never doubt his trust or the confidence he has that he has given you as well. Not everybody has the confidence and the trust to stand up here either. Trust me, it took a few times for me to not stand here and hear my own knees knocking. I was a little nervous, but I was told to do it, so I'm doing it. And I am more comfortable with it. I have more confidence, more boldness, and not afraid to try something or do something because I feel it was put on me to do. So the quiet, shy side of me is here telling you we're going to do it <laughs> because I trust that the Lord is doing this for a reason. I cannot stand here and hide behind the podium quietly and not be heard. Nobody is going to hear what the Lord wants them to hear. So you have that same opportunity. The difference is you're not standing here. You're standing out here amongst everybody. Hi, I'm your friend. Hi, have a good day. You're showing the boldness. And when you show that, they see the Lord in you. That's where your boldness is. It's not me standing here. I'm just the receptacle sharing the word. <laughs> oh, so when you think of the boldness, what do you think about? It's kind of an interesting word because it, in one regard, it, it's kind of in one sentence. However, kids, when they think of their dads, do you remember kids and their dads? My dad can do anything. He's like a superhero. My dad takes care of everything. He's not afraid of anything. And that's how most kids think of their parents or their father because my daddy fixes everything. <laughs> so then when they're little, they're like the superheroes. And then there are the other superheroes. <laughs> Superman. You know, I've wore scarves and I got a cotton doors and I got a cotton you know, nails and all these other things, but you never saw Superman get his cape caught in the doorway. <laughs> he had that cape mastered, but he had superpowers speedily. That'd be fun. I could get somewhere a lot faster and not have to pay airfare either. <laughs> and then you got Spider-Man. He's got those cool little web slings. He can swing from building to building, and that looks really cool, and I'm thinking, oh, my arms would be really tired. Not like whining with a superpower, right? <laughs> and Batman. Well, he had all those cool gadgets and a sidekick Robin. You know, the, I mean, who really has never wanted to drive the Batmobile? Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And have that music play at the same time? <laughs> I mean, that would be just cool. The Incredible Hulk. Okay. I don't mind the color green, but there are limits. You know, he's got kind of a temper problem. <laughs> But if something needs to be moved, I tell you what, you can make a finger and flick it aside. There goes that mountain. You know, God can be our incredible Hulk and move that mountain just as easy. Thor. Really don't remember a lot of Thor, but you know, he had all that golden long blonde hair, I think, and all the kids thought, ooh, isn't that cool? <laughs> I don't know what his purpose really was. Wonder Woman. All right, now, she had the belt of truth. You lie to me, let's see what happens. Well, you know, there, it, you know, then Shazam, I think he was like a genie of sorts, you know, make wishes come true. And the gladiator, yeah, he's, he was a wrestler or carried a sword or something. He's one that I wasn't real familiar with either, but all of these superheroes had something that the kids look up to. And I'm talking about kids of all ages because, you know, it's the adults that collect all the, uh, the 
comic books and the action figures. They're not dolls, they're action figures. The toys, they don't take them out of the boxes because they become more, well, they say they're saying that because of the value of it, but come on, the kid in you is saying, I got all these cool toys. But there's something in each one of these that strikes the child in the way that they're supposed to be. I mean, Superman, he can fly to the sky. Well, the Lord's up there. Spider-Man, he can swing all over. He can get closer to somebody to the Lord. You know, they all have something that has a moral in there for a child to hang on to. So as we get older, though, we develop our own boldnesses as well. We change them a little bit, you know. But some of them aren't always done in the right ways. They're for many reasons. For example, a lot of people like to hide how they live. That's not their boldness, you know. It's, they have to adjust things because they've come out of different situations like poverty. People are ashamed of being in poverty. Well, it's not necessarily their fault that they're in poverty. It is part of their season. But you need to grow through your season and live in your season. Be bold in that season. I will come out of this. Divorce. Divorce is a very painful thing for many, many people. You know, they're ashamed of it. I will come through this with the boldness. I will get better. Things will come around. Abuse. And there's so many kinds of abuse. Not only physical, there's alcohol, there's drugs. These are all things that people try to hide their boldness and hide from because they're ashamed or embarrassed. But you stand up tall. Put your arms up to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm here, help me. And the boldness starts. It grows. It teaches you. It's one step at a time. You feel it. Don't give up. Humiliation. There are so many bullies out there that like to humiliate somebody, or they're humiliated because of different things in their life. For example, kids, their grades at school. I didn't generally have the best grades in school, many reasons as to why, but I didn't. And I was embarrassed about it. And I didn't want to ever turn over my page when they gave a test back. Or, you're too heavy? Do you think you're too ugly? These are society's things putting on us where Satan is in charge. Well, we get rid of Satan, we stomp on his face as I have demonstrated, and really I do have fun doing that. I'm not taunting him, which would be foolish, but I'm telling him I am in charge of him being beneath me. I am not too heavy, I am not ugly, I am not humiliated. This list can be far too dangerous to continue with, so you have to change it up. I am the perfect child of God. He made me this way on purpose. And I've become more bold about it. Not obnoxious like I really used to be. I really was. Because I was so many of these other situations. But now I understand a big difference. I'm strong in the Lord. The Lord is in me and I'm bold with that. Amen. I have fallen many times and he has picked me up dusted me off, and he continues to hold me. If you start sliding down, reach up, he'll pull you out. Keep that boldness with you. Remember, that is the strength and the power of the Lord in you when these are coming on you. We have Psalm 84, 11. For the Lord is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk in blamelessness. Okay. Now, when you're walking along in blamelessness, you're showing people, I am a child of God. I am proud and happy to be a child of God. I am here to help you as a child of God. It's bold. There's a lot of Christians that are afraid to confront somebody that I am a Christian, I'm proud of it, I'm happy, and my life is awesome because of it. And sometimes you just have to have a little aggression, not trample over them, you know, not be overly aggressive because that sometimes can turn around and not be such a good plan. But, you know, 
it's just the way we are designed. Don't hide behind things. Be the child of God and show people who you are. God gave us that power to use to help those who need it. Proverbs 13.20 Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. I do like Proverbs. They're almost kind of like a Psalms. They're musical and almost like a poem. And when you're in school, you're in different levels of learning. And you hit different levels, you learn different things, and you learn more depth of them. Well, it's the same thing with the Bible, dependent on where your walk is with the Lord. Baby Christians, as we've heard, you get fed milk. As you become a stronger Christian, you get fed the meat. Well, Proverbs and Psalms are pretty interesting in how you want to look at them. If you just glance over them, you just see the words. But when you walk wise and become wise, a lot of people think, well, you know, I can walk around. I'm not getting any smarter or wiser. Well, it's who you're with. It's telling us, hang around the wise people. You become more wise. You learn from the wise. They help you teach and learn and grow and get stronger to the next level. But the same thing happens when you hang around with the fools. Well, you know, I just hung out with them that one day and we did this, but nothing happened. Sorry, a lot of things happened. Now you've already slid back. Yeah, first of all, repent. Ask for help and get off that path. Get back to the wise. Help the fools, but don't hang with the fools. You also get guilty by association. People are not aware how strong that really is. You know, I was downtown shopping for something the other day, and I saw this person hanging out with that person. Okay, well, there's the first step. You were spotted, you were gossiped about, and now you're labeled. It doesn't matter how it may look or what was really going on. However, stay bold when you know you're there for the right reason. Then those that were wrong can also come to see the right thing, especially when they see that fool that you were with has come around to be wise because they're hanging with the right people. We all have levels of learning. We all have to know where and when we are, but we need to reach and stretch and grow in those levels to be stronger and bolder because it only happens when you have the Savior in you and you follow God. Do what they want. Oh my gosh, your boldness will just shine through you. They're going to come looking for you, these fools that are learning. They're going to come looking to you and say, you know, they're just thinking there's something about you. I just can't put my finger on, but I kind of like hanging around with you. Well, help them grow. God who so loved us. Love Jesus. He gave us Jesus and the Holy Spirit. They are in us. Show it. The boldness comes shining through. Proverbs 24, 16. For through the righteousness set, fall seven times. They rise again, but the, stu the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. Ooh. Have you ever walked outside <laughs> and fallen down your own steps? <laughs> it's embarrassing, right? And everybody does it, but the first thing you do is look around to see, did anybody see that? Because it's like embarrassing that somebody, everybody falls down steps, but we all have pretty much the same reaction. As long as we're not seriously hurt, it's like, oh, what we're going to look at was your pride, <laughs> because it was embarrassing. But it just tells us in a different scenario, every time you fall, slide back, you get up again. Stand up, forgiveness, move forward, learn, grow, dust off. It's another stretch. You just keep moving. You, it's like driving down the road and you get a flat tire. It's like, well, in the day of shock. It's not. You change the tire, you move on, you make up for what you did, the time. You just keep the bold, positive, strong attitude and keep growing. You're going to have those things happen. You're going to fall down the steps. You're going to get a flat tire. Something's going to happen. It's a test. You know? But those are, 
the wicked that stumble in calamity, they're, they're needing to change things around. They are lost, and Satan's got to hang on, a hold on them. He doesn't on us, because we know we're going to move. Remember that phrase years ago, was keep on keeping on? <laughs> I can't even remember. There was a commercial on about that. And it was very powerful. You'd see it on t-shirts, you'd see it on billboards, and people would be saying, oh, keep on keeping on, dude. Well, do it. <laughs> I mean, if you want to change the jargon of the Bible to get the effects through to some people, sometimes you've got to adjust it so that they understand it. And those that are the wicked and stumbling, we've got to adjust it for them. I'm a child of God, and I got all this, and you should follow me. No, oh, it's hello. Hi. I'm Carla. Ever want to talk? Let me know. I'm here for you. We just can't let the children of God slip through the cracks, stay there where they've stumbled and need help. I mean, God gave us Jesus. We can give them a hand. Just reach out, just like the Lord does. He reaches down with his hand and pulls us up. Reach out to somebody and pull them up. That's what we're going to be doing with these folks that we're going to take stuff to. We've got clothes, we'll have foods. We're just reaching out to them. That little bit is going to touch somebody there. Somebody's going to come out of that better. You didn't have to make a statement. You didn't have to do a sermon, throw a verse at them. To show them love, kindness, and help them come out of it. Those things are, it seems like it's not really a big deal to give these things to people, but it's super huge, big deal. Because God is behind it, and God has taken us to the people that need it, just as it is in that verse in Proverbs. Those that are in calamity. He wants them out, and we're going to help bring them out. If we save one person, as we know, Heavens are going to be singing and raining because we found that one out of 99 to come home. So we pray for them. Yeah, of course we can be greedy, selfish, and a little pompous and say we want to bring them all home. Because we do. But it's one at a time. Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, so one, purpose, one person sharpens another. Yeah. Iron sharpens iron is the same as words, how they can be effective. You can tear somebody down, or you can build them up. Unfortunately, a lot of people are quicker to tear somebody down. You have to stop, take that breath, and rethink what you're going to do. It's our duty as God's children, as proclaimed Christians, bold Christians, to help them with our words. Bring them the positive, share the word. Let them know that we are here helping each other. Iron sharpens iron. It's not just a phrase of a sword sharpening in a sword. We are the irons. We are the sharpeners. And we are there. It takes boldness, though, to approach people. A lot of people are afraid to walk down that dark alley. Yeah, even as a kid, I was... <laughs> That's kind of, um, well, some would say foolish, some would say brave, and some would just say, oh, that's Carla. I lived, <laughs> with, I lived in the uh, north side of town here, and the river was in our, in the, behind our house, in the block that we lived in, because it went down towards Oak Grove Park. Well, in the backyard, it got really, really dark. We had raccoons, we had squirrels, you'd think we lived on a farm. Because, you know, by the river they have all these animals, and I just forgot about that till now. And uh, I heard something outside one day, and it was late. I was probably 14, I was babysitting, and I heard this noise, and I didn't like that sound. So, <clears throat> bold Carla went to the kitchen and got a butcher knife, and walked outside with this butcher knife, going, who's out here? And the only way the light would work was right in front of the house because there was no backlight. And it's pitch black back there, so I'm walking around in the dark with this butcher knife, but if there's anybody out here, I got a knife. There's a fine line between brave and stupid. <laughs> but it was pretty bold.
old at the same time. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that for years. <laughs> but that's an example of how to show that you're bold without going to the extremes. <laughs> but yeah, I've always frequently done things like that spontaneously. And I have to realize now that that's the Lord working through me because to give me that kind of reassurance and strength. I mean, most people quick lock the door and shut the windows because it was a hot summer day. Call the police. No, there's that fool down the street walking around with a butcher knife as a kid. However, the Lord has never let something happen when I've done these things. Well, clearly he's had his hand on me a lot longer than I ever realized as a child. <clears throat> Ecclesiastics 4, 10, and 11. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who fails and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? <clears throat> Now this one's kind of got like a double message in it here. You know, when you work together as two people, you can get things done better. But also, when you work together with God, you get a lot more done. Because he's also managed to give you people to work with. You can't build a house by yourself. You need help. You can't build a church by itself either. We need God. We have a real church with real possibilities because God is building it. There are many buildings and places that go up are just a profit process. That's not it. Yeah, when you work alone, you just don't get anywhere. There's nobody there to support you and help you. You, know, you can't bounce ideas off a empty space. You can talk to God, he'll talk to you. He gave you a person to work with you as well. This is a dual purpose here. God is showing us with him always can do these things. And he will supply what you need to do it also. He supplied somebody to help you. you know, to do it yourself is just foolish. It's selfish also. And it's very lonely. I mean, when you have these days that are just, Oh, why me? The whiny days, you don't get anything accomplished. You're lonely and it's depressing. When you turn it around, forgive me, Lord. Thank you for your blessings, your help, your guidance, and showing me where to go, what to do, taking the next step and making it better you know, to keep me warm. The Lord keeps you warm. You can have a cold and a blanket and still be freezing cold. But you have the Lord, he'll warm you up. A hug from a friend will help warm you up. It warms up the coggles of your heart and opens it up. Excuse me. When your heart is cold, you're cold. Open up the eyes of your heart, as the Lord says. That song always gets kind of stuck in me after I say that. You don't want to be lost. You want to be warm. You want to be loved. You want to work together. You want to accomplish what the Lord has in store for you. Follow him. Work with the ones that have the opportunity to help you as well. 2 Corinthians <clears throat> excuse me, 5, 19 through 21. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. He's trying to straighten things out, fix it up. Not counting people's sins against them. All right. Jesus, you're my Savior. Please forgive me of my sins. God doesn't remember them anymore. We do because we keep getting this little nagging individual reminding us. He's gone. Be gone. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. He's trying to fix everything, and he's doing it through Jesus for us. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though we, uh, pardon me, as though we're God making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him 
who had no sin to be sin for us. That is such a burden. So that in him we might become the righteousness of God. All right, people. He's saying, we're going to fix this. I'm sending you a savior. We're going to fix this problem that's been going on. I've been telling you, I'm sending you some money. Here I am, my son and the Holy Spirit, all in one, to fix everything. And how does that work? Well, for those that need to know, it's the simplest process is, Jesus, I accept you as my Savior into my heart. Come into me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Anybody who says that, you now have Jesus in you, and you're starting to be reconciled with the Lord. It's fixing. It's repairing. It's growing. It's living in you now as your Savior. That's where your boldness comes from. When you start feeling that little mustard seed of faith grow, twitch, your boldness is growing too. You're a different person. You don't see it a lot of the times, but somebody will look at you like, oh, have you lost weight? Did you cut your hair? No, I haven't done anything different, except the best, most important thing you can do for yourself. I accepted Jesus as my Savior, so now people see this. And you're growing, and they're getting bolder, and they're seeing it and feeling it and sharing it. There's a contagious disease that we all need to have that little mustard seed start, get the boldness, move it on. It's like hands around the world. Golly, how long ago was that when that was out? That just came up to me now. You know, they used to have that, hands across the world. So you have to use rubber gloves now in a mask. But we can still have hands across the world until this is all straightened out too. And everybody else grows a little stronger. Ephesians 5.20 Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, that's pretty well stated. Be bold when you say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, have you gone to a restaurant and you can tell if somebody's praying at the table, but it's like, oh, no. Don't be embarrassed or ashamed to pray in public to let people see this. Be bold. You don't have to shout it across the restaurant, of course, you know, at the table. Have your prayer. And we've done that, and afterwards looked up here, the server has been standing there waiting to put the food down. But they waited. They had the respect for the boldness that we have for the Lord. I'm so sorry I didn't mean to interrupt. You weren't interrupting. You know, some people, to them, they'll just drop it down too. But you know what? That's okay. They still got to be part of it. <laughs> our boldness, sharing our prayer out loud at the table, proudly as children of God, they got infected whether they liked it or not. Because the Lord made it so that they were there at that time to hear that. There's no accidents, no coincidences when it comes to the Lord. So they can just walk away and smile. I do, I, I love it when we say grace with the grandkids in their cute little hands. And the youngest one, she gets her hands in there. She's just got this great big smile on her face. Not really sure what's going on, but everybody else does it. And she's just, just so precious looking when you do it. I just can't help but light, you know, <laughs> out of the corner of my eye and watch this glow. Well, she's being fed and she's absorbing it. And we're going to keep pushing on it. And the kids, you know, they're all so bold and happy to do it. They notice something when they do it. It's not an accident again. When you're bold enough to make sure you do this with them, for them, teach them, you just have this big glow around the table. And I love every bit of it. That in itself makes chaos with kids at a mealtime worth it. <laughs> so bring on the chaos because we got the prayers. <laughs> Oh my, uh, Philippians 2, 2 and through 4. Then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in the spirit and of the mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, 
not looking to your own interests, but to each of you, to the interest of others. Well, this is what Jesus has asked us to do. Because, you know, he kind of did that for us already. A long time ago. He put him. He put all of us first. And for every generation to come, dying on the cross for us. You know, makes my joy complete because of his love. That is the only true sacrifice that we really can understand is how much somebody can love you. Is there nothing you wouldn't do for somebody in your family? Yeah. Whatever body part you may need, if it works, you can have it. Well, Jesus gave every body part, every drop of blood, everything for us to be like-minded, to want to help somebody. Yeah. It's for somebody else. And, well, honestly, we already know that when we do do something like that, the Lord glorifies us. But that's not your reason for doing it. It's to glorify God, to help each other. Because there is nothing like it. And you just can't help but feel good when you do have that opportunity. Because nobody wants to see somebody suffering. <coughs> but we all do in different ways. And something as simple as a hug can be enough in some cases. Well, the Lord's hugging us all the time, so share the hugs. I mean, this was boldness on Jesus' part for us. Not that he had a choice, but he did have a choice. He could have asked the Father, I don't want to do this. And he said, why haven't you forsaken me? He didn't. But yet he went through all that for us. There isn't a bolder situation that we could ever do. Being humble is also showing your boldness by not being pompous. Show your love for the Lord in a beautiful way, a bold way. Not obnoxious and arrogant. That's not showing the love for the Lord. Oh, Father, thank you for this word today. Thank you for always providing what you want us to hear deep in our being from you. You get stay with us, dwell in us, and grow in us. Jesus name, amen.